that's me. <clears throat> Pop out of nowhere. Yeah, I'm hiding. Yeah, yeah. You guys sit down. <clears throat> First, I want to thank you know all my staff and these guys for putting this on. It's a really humbling experience to me, uh, having started doing seminars, clinics like this over 20 years ago, and to only have to like sit down and eat chips and have a sandwich and you know, kind of watch and not really have to do a whole hell of a lot more than that. It's a real humbling experience for me. You know, it's a, it's a growth experience. It shows that we're bringing in the right people to be able to help you guys out. I had 100% confidence. You know, it's, I'm leaving tomorrow for vacation. You guys don't know, but I went home and packed, came back, have no concerns at all that you guys were being taken care of and being taught effectively with the best methods and the best techniques. And to me, that's, that's just an awesome thing, you know, to be able to have that, you know, and I'm not gonna say it was easy to get to this place. It's taken 20 years, you know, to be able to get there, but it's, it's a very humbling thing to me and it's very, very cool. So I wanna thank you guys for, for that, you know, and being able to provide that to the team because it means a lot to me. I wanna thank you guys for coming because that it's, it's going to make a difference. Everything you learn today, the little details matter. And for some of you guys, is, it, well, they weren't just details. They're like major fuck ups, I'm sure. You know, so the major fuck ups really matter. The little details matter as well. I did hear earlier, they asked the question of how many of you guys competed and how many wanted to compete. Um, from a show of hands, how many plan on competing sometime this year now? All right, so either you're all too tired or these guys sucked at motivating you to try to do a competition. Um, <clears throat> try to, if you can, you know, try to compete because, you know, there's all levels of competition and you, just because you get in a meet doesn't mean you're gonna be competing against, you know, the top lifters. What and now with a powerlifting meet, what, four every weekend, you know, with the availability of so many meets, that's your chance to validate your starting point if you haven't competed before. You know, because you have to have something to train toward. You know, and having powerlifted for 30 years and no longer being able to do that, I still struggle with that now, trying to find something to train for. If you go to a meet and all you squat is 95 pounds and you bench 65 pounds and you deadlift the, I guess you, you can't pull the bar, can you? The bar and collars, that's a starting point. You know, nobody's going to make fun of you. Nobody's going to care. But what it does is it establishes, okay, this is where I am. Next time I'm going to be better. And then the next meet you get better. And then the next meet you get better. But it keeps you focused to be able to train to get better. Even if you don't want to be the greatest power lifter in the whole world, it puts purpose behind your training. And when there's purpose behind your training, if you're just strength training for, for leisure or for stress release or whatever it's going to be, that purpose behind the training is everything. Because that's the difference between validating in your own head, oh, it's okay to take this day off. And, oh, I need to get into the gym and do this. Because... <clears throat> Don't let anybody fool you, even the people who love to train and are competing at the highest levels and are training six times a week, they don't walk through the door every day thinking, I can't wait to train. A lot of the times they're driving to the gym thinking, I don't want to fucking do this. You know, then they get in the gym and they still don't want to do it. And then that once they get going through the motions, it kind of clicks in. So don't think there's this, you know, the fantasy land that your brain's going to always want to do it. That's the difference between the people who advance and the people that don't. The people who advance are the people that just do it anyhow. You know, I'm not saying overtrain. You know, I'm not saying to do stupid shit like I spent most of my career doing. I'm saying when they speak consistency, that word consistency just rolls off everybody's tongue so easy, and it really doesn't have a whole lot of meaning and there's really no significance behind it. But it's really, really hard to do if you're trying to actually work towards something 
Now imagine if you're trying to be consistent, if you're trying to work towards something that you can't in your own mind validate a purpose for. You're almost setting yourself up to lose. So if it is a meet, that's great. That's just a better way to establish purpose. If it's not a meet, just set a date. You say in 12 weeks, I'm going to come in the gym. You know, you're going to clear your schedule. Nothing's going to impact this. You know, it's a Saturday. You're going to wipe it clean. You're going to come in. You're going to make sure you got somebody in there to spot, and you're going to you're going to you're going to max out on all three lifts. You're going to see where you are. You're going to find out if you got better. All right. And if you didn't get better, that's 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 one of the th takeaways I want you guys to, to understand here. If you go into the gym or if you ask any lifter and you go into the gym and you break all records and you walk out, like, that's awesome. But then you start thinking, well, what I learned? I go, well, you learned you got better. That's great. But you still didn't really learn anything. So you won, but you kind of lost. Now, if you go into the gym and you get some lifts and you miss some or you go to compete and you make some lifts and you miss some, but you learned and you learned why you missed and you discovered, oh shit, I'm supposed to breathe into my stomach instead of my chest, or I'm supposed to, maybe I should bring my hands in. And then that difference ends up adding 50 pounds to your lift, you won. So you always win, even when you lose. If you can find a way to reframe the situation, you know, so that's the purpose or the power of having that purpose, is if you have a good, strong enough purpose that means something to you, you always win, even when you lose. So keep that in mind and just don't train on a whim. I'm not telling you to make it the number one priority in your life. I did that for many years. A lot of these guys here have done it for many years. And we can tell you horror stories about that. But hey, if you wanna be the greatest powerlifter in the world and that's what you gotta do, then that's what you got to do. You know, I can tell you how to do that real effectively. So can JL and everybody else. And we can tell you the sacrifices that are going to be made from that. Most people don't fall into that category. You know, most people are doing this because this is, if you're here now, then training does rank amongst your, one of your top four priorities in life. All right. If that's not the case, then Elite FTS is marketing to the wrong market because that's who we market to. When they were speaking about the content and the value of the content on our site, that's what you're gonna find on our site is content geared towards people who training is one of their top four priorities, not under. Now that could be as a coach, you know, so there's, material, there's content on there on how to be a better coach, how to be a better trainer. Now, I'm pretty sure if you're a coach or a trainer and that's how you make your living, it's probably one of the top four priorities in your life. You know, if you're a competitive lifter trying to be the best lifter you can be, it's going to be there. Now, if it falls out of that top four, we don't have content for you. You know, there's other places that have that. I don't want to mention names because they're all good publications. They're very good publications. But I don't want to have, you know, an article on, you know, the top five reasons for erectile dysfunction. I don't give a fuck about that. You know, that's not going to make you a better lifter. You know, we want to have, <laughs> well, hey, it might, it might. You know, I, we, hey, hey, those in the know already know Cialis will give you a better pump, sometimes a better workout. So I take that back. Um, this is going to totally go the wrong direction. I need, I need to start spinning this another way real quick. Um, while I'm up here, because I didn't spend a lot of time out here today, do any of you guys have any questions for me, be it training related, business related, or any of the such? Yeah, erectile dysfunction. I don't even know where that came from, but. <laughs> when are you having another one of these type of events? Uh, Joe and Alicia would be the people to ask about that. This is, uh, this, uh, it's a trial event. You know, we're, we're <clears throat> we are in the process of building an event structure and coming up with different events that you've not seen before. And I like to use the word event and experience more so than seminar, because we want you to come here and have it be an experience that when you walk away, you think, man, that was fucking awesome. And that's what we're shooting for. And to come up with different 
types of experiences that we're tossing around and we've been talking all day, you know, on how we can kind of move and change with this because when, when I've done seminars for 20 years and all different types of styles and formats, I can go through every style and format that we've done before in the past and other people are all now using those same formats. All right, so you have to continually evolve to become the leader and to stay the leader at what you're doing. So we are evolving the formats of the events that we've been doing and we've been doing it over the past couple of years. And we wanna try, we wanna try to dial in different paths. So it's not just say, this would be more what we would consider a learning instructional type of experience where you really, none of you really needed to use more than the bar for the corrections that you are being taught today. And that should be how a lift is technically trained. You start adding a lot of weight, yeah, of course, there's gonna be breakdowns. There's gonna be technical breakdowns. Gravity kind of has that effect on things. You know, everything that you were fixed today and doing perfectly with the bar, I throw 90% on there. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's gonna all go to fucking hell. You're gonna have other issues, but until you dial in being able to do the bar and very lightweight correctly, then there's no point in trying to, to push that other high end, which, could, which we're discussing as being a whole nother experience. You know, you come in and then we'll have people work up to a higher level, knowing that their technical efficiency is already at a set point. So we don't have to spend 20, 30 minutes trying to dial in a lot of basic stuff. There might only be a couple things wrong. A couple weeks ago, I had a group from Purdue Barbell Club come down and Brandon Spentley's worked with them a couple times now. Very, very few problems, just minor problems, some tweaks, you know, taking them through one or two rotations of the squat, dial those in, and it's like, all right, let's fucking do this. And then we take them up to 60%, ran them through a dynamic squat workout and just pounded their ass into the ground. You know, it was awesome. It was also cool because they didn't pay anything and I told them if they didn't train hard and cue people, I was gonna throw them out of the gym. So that was also a real cool thing about it as well. But that's another track that we're looking at there. And then more educational things. So you're gonna see more things popping up. When we'll have more like this, this is probably gonna be a more frequent type of experience, maybe different coaches. You know, we need to make sure that's, I'm, I have to make sure, and I very rarely say I when I talk about Elite FTS because there's a lot more to this than just me. There's no way I, I'm too stupid to do everything that's going on with this company. I'll tell you that right now. How I got here, I still have no idea, and I'm way in over my head, and I was in over my head when I started, and I'm still in over my head now, but thank God. I got a lot of people to help me who really give a shit about what we're trying to do. I will not ever put somebody in here to instruct that I don't feel comfortable leaving for a few hours to come back and know that you guys are gonna be treated right. All right, so that's the promise that I've always had and that's the promise that the smaller the group is, the more important that becomes. If you've ever been, if any of you guys ever come to the Learn to Train seminars that we did, they were big, it was like 100 and some people, tons of people in here, you know, 40 coaches, everybody was taken care of, but there's always checks and balances with that because there's so many coaches. We had 20, 30 coaches. With this, there's no checks and balance. There's trust, you know, and that's me trusting that these guys know exactly what they're doing. So with that, yes, there'll be more of those. I'm sorry for the long-winded answer. That's just kind of how I am. If you watch my table talks, you probably hear me say the same thing three or four times over and over again. All my staff and friends make fun of me for it. But when, when I've grown the company, given seminars over and over again, somebody somewhere, and it was probably bullshit, told me something that if you want to get something through somebody's head, you need to repeat it at least three times in the answer for them to understand it. Well, that's stuck. And now when I'm having daily conversations with people, they want to slap me in the face and tell me to shut up.